Good late morning, everybody. Super Jackster 01 here now. It's time for a big DVD and Blu-ray update for today, December 26, 2019. I hope you all had a very Merry Christmas this year. I know I had a good Christmas. And I have a lot of items. I got 20 items. I know I got one DVD and 19 Blu-rays. Yeah, that's a lot. So we'll have to do this as quick as we can. Anyway, for some of these items we know I got on Black Friday. So you saw my Black Friday video, which so you, you pretty much know what they are. And then uh, some I just got in between, like, you know, during the month of December. And then there's some I got for Christmas. So we're going to do the Black Friday stuff first. And I will show each section. For each section, I'll show the films in order when they came out or when they first premiered. So we'll do the Black Friday stuff first. And we'll start with the DVD first. I got this at Wal we all know, I got this at Walmart in North Queenstown, Rhode Island. That's the DVD of SpongeBob SquarePants, the Christmas DVD. This is a reissue of the original 2003 DVD because it has a different cover. Uh, this reissue is from, I, I believe this reissue is from 2008, if I'm not mistaken. But the disc inside is the original 2003 DVD. Yeah, the SpongeBob Christmas episode is one of the best episodes ever. It's in my top 20 favorite episodes. And that's the episode that introduced the, the, the live action character Patchy the Pirate, who's actually played by Tom Kenny. He is the voice of SpongeBob. We know this year was SpongeBob's 20th anniversary because the show first came out in May of 1999. And last month when I got this marked one year since the show's creator, uh, Steven Hillenburg, died of ALS. But we all know they released the new trailer for the new SpongeBob film, the SpongeBob movie Sponge on the Run, which we all know that film's coming out May 22nd, 2020. Definitely looking forward to that. Anyway, as you can see, here's the spine. Back. This has the episode's... Three episodes that are in my top ten favorite SpongeBob. Actually, no, yeah, three episodes that are in my top ten favorite episodes are actually on this DVD. The episodes we got Christmas Who, of course. Then we also got Procrastination, Snowball Effect, Survival of the Idiots, Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy Four, Chocolate with Nuts, as seen on TV, Pizza Delivery, and Squeaky Boots. Snowball Effect, Chocolate with Nuts, and Pizza Delivery are on my top ten favorite episodes. Pizza Delivery is at number 10. Uh, Snowball Effect, I believe, is at number... Yeah, Snowball Effect is at number 6. And then Chocolate with the Nuts is at number 3. Because uh, number, number 1 is Band Geeks and then number 2 is Shanghai. Yeah. Anyway. I'm going to open this up. See, it's in an eco case right there. And here's the disc, which is over. You can see SpongeBob and Patrick. This is the original 2003 DVD. The artwork is actually very simple. The design of SpongeBob here and Patrick are actually very similar to that original DVD. Yep. This reissue is from 2008, but this is the original 2003 DVD because it's all the previews from 2003. Yeah, but SpongeBob Christmas, excellent special. All right, now, this next Blu-ray, this I got at um, the FYE store inside the Warwick Mall. You already saw it. This, yep, I got the Blu-ray of Close Encounters of the Third Kind. This is a Steven Spielberg film from 1978, I believe, was it? Or 1977, I, I don't remember. Or, I Believe it or not, I actually haven't seen this film yet. And this is one of two Steven Spielberg items that's in this update. The other will come a little later. But yeah, I actually haven't seen this film yet. So if you've seen this film, let me know. I know one actor from Jaws is in this film, that being Richard Dreyfus. Here's the spine. Back... There's no critic review on the back. It's got a Blu-ray exclusive movie in exclusive in movie of View from Above editors fact tracked. This is a much older Blu-ray release. This Blu-ray is from I believe this Blu-ray is from 2011 or something. There's three versions of the movie. They got the original theatrical version, the special edition version, and the director's cut. Yeah. Here's the disc. His artwork and Sony. This is a Sony Blu-ray artwork inside the disc. The artwork. Yeah, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. If you've seen this movie, let me know what you think. All right, now this, I got a Best Buy on Black Friday. This is the Blu-ray of Elf. As we know, this is also my all-time favorite Christmas movie. Great holiday movie from 2003. And um, as you know, I do have this film on DVD. This actually uses the same cover art as the DVD. This Blu-ray, uh, sorry if I keep looking back, uh, 
This Blu-ray, this Blu I believe, also came out in 2008. Yeah, my favorite Christmas movie. This is just a great, great movie. Here's the spine. Back. Funny and intelligently made. Will Ferrell gives a terrific performance today by Mike LaSalle, the San Francisco Chronicle. Well, uh, he's got focus points. Fact track. Frivolly makes Elf even more festive as glimpse of the movie's magical making pop up while you watch the movie special features also got a commentary by will ferrell and director john favaro deleted in alternate scenes behind the scenes tag along with ferrell film school for kids how they made the north pole oh lights camera puffin that's a wrap kids on christmas deck the halls santa media christmas in tinseltown el karaoke elf karaoke and the theatrical trailer and i'm gonna open this up we got an eco case and here's the disc it has our you can see buddy the elf that's actually one of the art the disc artwork designs for my DV for the DVD. Yeah, but Elf, my favorite Christmas movie. Great, great, great movie. All right, now this I got at Target in Warwick uh, on uh, Black Friday. This is the Blu-ray of the Polar Express, another one of my favorite Christmas movies. This, as you know, I do have this film on DVD, and this also uses the same cover art as the DVD from 2000 that was released in 2005 this blu-ray i believe was released back way back in 2007 if i'm not mistaken yeah great great christmas movie this year actually marked the film's 50th anniversary because you know the film itself came out in theaters in november of 2004 it got mixed reviews when it came out it's got like a 55 percent ring on rotten tomatoes i believe but you know due to television the airings it's gained a cult, it's gained a cult following it's now considered to be a real christmas classic anyway as you can see here's the spine back Amazing, you've never seen anything like it. It's stated by Joel Siegel of Good Morning America slash ABC TV. I believe that's from the, that's the same Craig video that's on the DVD. The DVD I had had no bonus features because it was just the one disc DVD. But this is a, this one does have a lot of bonus features. It's got Smokey and Steamer song, You Look Familiar, The Many Polar Faces of Tom Hanks, A Genuine Ticket to Ride Documentary Gallery, Five Featurettes, The Inspiration, An Author, Adventure, Profile, and Chris Van Alsberg. Because, you know, this movie is based on, Chris, Al Chris Van Alsberg's 1985 children's book of the same name, which I do ha own that book. Believe Josh Groban performs at the Greek Theater. Behind the scenes of Believe, bring a hit song to Magical Life in the recording studio. Uh, Flurry of Effects Gallery, five motion capture sessions. Meet the Snow Angels, the Movie Maker's Christmas Memories, and a theatrical trailer. Yeah, this is a, a very motion captured movie. I I'm going to open this up. Here we got the eco case, and here's the disc with our work. You could see the Polar Express and uh, the back of the Hero Boy. Since we know the movie is his name is never said in the movie, but it's believed actually there's a theory actually that some files or something somebody found that the bo the Hero Boy's name in the movie is actually Chris, named after Chris Van Alsberg. Yeah, that's, that's kind of cool. But yeah, Polar Express, awesome, awesome movie. All right, now this I got at the FY Eastern inside the Warwick Mall along with the Close Encounters of the Third Kind Blu-ray. And these are, these next two are actually part films of a film series. I got the Blu-ray of John Wick, Keanu Reeves' Best Since the Matrix, today by Eric Veps of Anticle News, and A Wild and Bloody Rise, today by Jimmy Joe Blow's Movie Empire, Emporium. Yeah, I actually had not seen this film. I, I, I recently just watched the John Wick trilogy, which it, and it was really good. We also have... Um, there's also a fourth film coming out, which is John Wick 4. That's supposed to come out uh, May 21st, 2021, I believe. Yeah. I have to say, so far from what I saw, I'm probably going to give these a rewatch. This is current, This is this first, the first John Wick. This is my favorite film in the trilogy. Let me If you've seen these movies, let me know what your favorite John Wick film is. Anyway, we've got The Spine. Back. Cinema's Next Great Badass is here. Stay by Fred Tupel of Crave Online. Unless you've got an audio commentary, don't F with John Wick, Calling in the Calvary, Destiny of uh, Collective, Assassin's Code, uh, Red Circle, and NYC Nor. Yep. Yeah, this was actually not a bad movie at all. We have the digital copy code. Here's the Blu-ray disc, which has John Wick. And here's the DVD, which has that same character. Yeah, Keanu Reeves, this year in 2019, he had quite a career. He was in a lot of movies, John Wick 3, Toy Story 4. He's also going to be in the new Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure movie, and he's also supposed to make a cameo in the new SpongeBob movie. That's kind of cool. Yeah, John Wick, not a bad movie. Now this I got at Walmart along with the SpongeBob DVD. This is John Wick Chapter 2. This is the regular Blu-ray. As you know, I did initially get the 4K version of this uh, along with the Blu-ray of the, the Blu-ray Elf at Best Buy, but as you saw in my Black Friday video, I ended up getting this for a cheaper price, so then I returned that 4K copy. Yep. 
This was also not a bad sequel. Here we got the spine. Back. The Real Deal, an action movie fireworks did by Peter Travers of Rolling Stone. Let's just got deleted scenes. Uh, Retro Wick, exploring the unexpected success of John Wick, traveling John Wick. Wick Viz, friends confident the Keanu slash Chad partnership. Uh, as above, so below, the underworld of John Wick, car food, ride along, chamber check, evolution of a fight scene, Wick's toolbox, kill count, dog, dog Wick short, audio commentary by Keanu Reeves and director Chad Stahelski and theatrical trailer. Yep, this was the first John Wick movie to only be directed by Chad Stahelski because for the first John Wick, John Wick, it was directed by both Chad uh, Stahelski and uh, David Leach, actually. Uh, which, uh, but however, only Chad Stahelski was actually credited for John Wick 1 due to the Writers Guild, so David Leach went uncredited, and, but David Leach did not return for this film or the third film, and, you know, he later directed some movies, like he directed Deadpool 2, Hobbs and Shaw, etc. Anyway, I'm gonna open this up. Here we have the digital copy code. Here's the Blu-ray disc, which has John Wick, and here's the DVD, which has the same artwork. Yeah, John Wick 2, Chapter 2, good sequel. Now this I got at the Walmart in um, Warwick, Rhode Island. This is the Blu-ray of A Quiet Place, the scariest, most innovative movie of the year, said by Matt Miller of Esquire. This came out back in 2018. Believe it or not, I actually have not seen this film yet, so I'm going to have to give this film a watch soon. Starred a uh, married couple, Emily Blunt and John Krasinski, a married couple. And John Krasinski also directed this movie as well. He's also, they have the sequel coming out this this spring, actually, which I'm going to try to see. I, I was going to see this film in theaters back in 2018, but I just never got around to it. But yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to checking this movie out. If you've seen it, tell me what you think. Here's the spine. Back, if they hear you, they hunt you. And also says, a masterpiece that will scare for generations. Stay by Mark Marcus Allen of ABC TV. Blu-ray special features. We got Creating the Quiet... I, director John Krasinski gives you a behind-the-scenes look at a quiet pace, place, the sounds of darkness creating the sound of a silent world, a reason for silence, the art of unforgivable visual effects. Yep. Yeah, since this is a Paramount Blu-ray, it's no artwork. We got the yeah, Paramount. Uh, here's the Blu-ray disc, and here's the DVD disc. Yeah, Paramount doesn't do artwork. Yeah, quiet place. Definitely look forward to checking this out. Alright, now this Blu-ray, this I got at the, uh, I, I got this at Best Buy along with the Elf Blu-ray. This is the 4K Blu-ray of John Wick, um, 3, um, Chapter 3, Parabellum. I just watched this film last night, and this was at, no, uh, two nights ago, I should say, actually. And this was actually a very decent movie, actually. Like I said, currently the first John Wick is actually my favorite of them, but the sequel, these sequels were not bad, and I am looking forward to the fourth one. Here's the spine, the back. Hands down, one of the year's best action movies. Stay by Eric Davis of Fandango and Insane Explosive Two Fisted Acceleration. Stay by Brian Trudy of USA Today. And uh, we got most years got Parallel Legacy of the High Table. Uh, check your sights. Saddle up, Wick. Bikes, blades, bridge, and bits. Continental in the Desert, Dog Fu, House of Transparency, Shot by Shot, Theatrical Trailer Number 1, Theatrical Trailer Number 2, John Wick, uh, Hex Game Trailer, and Behind Scenes of John Wick Hex. Yep. It's got a nice shiny slip cover. We also got the digital copy code. Here's the 4K Blu-ray, which has John Wick on his horse. And here's the regular Blu-ray, which just has John Wick by himself. Yeah. This was actually a really good sequel. Okay. All right. And now we're going to do the stuff I got in between during the month of December. This first one I got uh, last week. I, I believe I got this at the Target store inside the Warwick Mall, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, I did. I did. I got this at the Target store inside the Warwick Mall. And that's the Blu-ray of A Christmas Story. And... This Blu-ray also came out in 2008. Yep, one of my all-time favorite Christmas. This is my second favorite Christmas movie, only behind Elf. Great, great, great classic. I'll shoot your eye out. I know Martin S5 1989 has this Blu-ray. 
Anyway, as you can see, here's the spine, back. No critic review on the back. But you see, it's got a commentary by Peter Billingsley, who plays Ralphie, Ralphie and director slash co-writer uh, Bob Clark. 20th anniversary documentary, another Christmas story, two festive featurettes, Daisy, Red Rider, a history and get-up leg, script pages, and a theatrical trailer. Yeah, I believe this, yeah, this Blu-ray is from 2008. It came out around the time the film was celebrating its 25th anniversary, because, you know, the film itself came out in theaters in November of 1983. Gonna open this up. So here we got a digital copy code, and here's the disc. It's a clear disc. Yeah, A Christmas Story, good movie. Or, no, it's a great movie, I should say. Now, this I got at Best Buy in Warwick, Rhode Island, about a week and a half ago. This is sort of a Christmas movie. It's sort of not a Christmas movie. This is the 30th anniversary Blu-ray of Die Hard. Yep. Ho, ho, ho. We know this film has a debate about whether or not it's a Christmas movie because the plot itself has nothing to do with Christmas, but the movie itself takes place at Christmas. I consider it to be a kind of in-between movie. But believe it or not, before I bought this Blu-ray, I actually had not seen this film, but I finally watched it a couple nights ago, and I enjoyed it. Bruce, I am a big fan of Bruce Willis. Yep. Yeah, I got this at Best Buy about a week and a half ago. Anyways, you can see, here's the spine. This Blu-ray came out last year as part of the film's 30th anniversary because the film itself came out in 1988. And in the back, I got Thrilling, a state by David Anson of Newsweek. And bonus series got a commentary by director John McTiernan and production designer Jackson DeGovio. Scene specific commentary by special effects supervisor Richard Edlund. Uh, subtle commentary, subtitle commentary by various cast and crew. The newscast featurettes, interactive still gallery, and trailers and TV spots. Oh, yeah, I and mean, here's what the actual cover looks like. Here we got the digital copy code, and we got all this stuff. It's in an eco case, and here's the disc. It's a blue disc. Yeah, but Die Hard, really good movie. Now this Blu-ray, uh, these next two Blu-rays, I got these a couple days ago at Newbury Comics in Warwick, Rhode Island. These were both films I saw in uh, my film appreciation class. Um, the one I've been taking my first semester of high school, and uh, I like these so much I decided to buy the Blu-rays of them. First on, we got The Big Sick, an awkward true story, the funniest date of the date, date movie of the year. Yeah, this is based on a true story from Judd Apato, producer of Bridesmaids and Trainwreck. Mm -hmm. yep. Anyways, you can see, here's the spine. Back. A joyous, generous-hearted romantic comedy stayed by Mohola Dargis of the New York Times. Those you've got a personal journey, the making of the big stick, uh, the real story, 2017 SXW Film Festival panel, cast and filmmakers commentary, the big stick, the other stuff, delete scenes, the bigger stick, stick around for more laughs. And actually, I, I take this back, actually, the next Blu-ray and the Blu-ray after that are also films I saw in film appreciation class, but I got them at different stores. Um... Yeah, this film was is based on the true story of uh, Emily V. Gordon and Kumail Nijani. I think that's how you say his name. And Kumail Nijani plays this character, the main character in here. So that's kind of cool. Although, Emily V. Gordon is actually in this movie. is played by this character, played by uh, Zoe Kazan. It also stars Holly Hunter and Ray Romero. Here we got the digital cup cocoon and... Oddly enough, even though this is a Lionsgate Blu-ray, there's no artwork. Here's the Blu-ray disc, blue disc, and then DVD is the gray disc. Yeah. If you have not seen The Big Stick, The Big Sick, I highly, highly, highly rec recommend this movie. This is a great, great movie. All right, now this I also got at Newbury Comics with The Big Sick Blu-ray. And this and the next film are also films I saw in film appreciation class, but the second Blu-ray I'm going to sh show after that, I got it at a different story. This is the Blu-ray of Game Night. Yeah, this movie is from 2018. Uh, and by the way, The uh, the Big Sick, that film's from 2017. Yeah. This was, a no this was a very, very funny and hilarious movie. Great, great movie. With Jason Bateman and Rachel McAdams. Yeah, I, if you have not seen this movie, this is definitely a great movie to watch. Very, very, very funny movie. Here's the spine. Back. Game Night is Winter Stay My Entertainment Weekly. I just got an unforgettable evening making Game Night and a gag reel. Yep. 
here's the Blu-ray disc, and here's the DVD disc. There's no inserts or anything since this is a used Blu-ray. Yep. Game night. Great movie. Now, this is another film I saw at film appreciation class, but it, it got... Um, but I got inside a different store. This I got at Target in Warwick, Rhode Island. The regular Target, not the one inside the Warwick Wall. This is the Blu-ray. This is another film from 2018. The Blu-ray of Black Klansmen. Uh, a stunning tour de force day by A.O. Scott the New York Times. This is a great movie. This um, this is based on the true story of Ron, St Ron Stallworth, who was an African-American police officer that helped expose the Ku Klux Klan. In the movie, the character is played by John David Washington, who's pl who's Denzel Washington's son. We also, got other, we also got Adam Driver playing Flip and a bunch of other great actors. This film was directed by Spike Lee. You can't go wrong with him. Spike Lee has made a lot of great movies. I know lately, though, his career, is, his movies have been kind of declining in quality, but this is a fantastic movie. This even got a Best Picture nomination. Your spine, back, HD picture and theater quality sound, and based on a courageous and crazy, outrageous, incredible true story. Most users got a, bonus, a Spike Lee joint, Ron Stallworth, Jordan Peele, and the cast discuss working with iconic director. Black Hampton extended trailer featuring Princess Mary, Don't You Weep. And there's no deleted scenes on here because, according to the editor of this movie, this movie had absolutely no deleted scenes, which is very, very, very rare in the movie industry nowadays. No scenes were deleted from the movie. Here we got cookie code and this thing. And here's the disc, the black disc. It was, this Blu-ray was released by Universal, even though this is actually a Focus Features film. Yeah, but Black Klansman, fantastic movie. Definitely highly, highly, highly recommend it. All right. Now, this I actually got at Best Buy in Warwick, Rhode Island today, actually. This is the Blu-ray of Missing Link. This film was not re was never released on 4K. A breathtaking adventure, another jewel in the like a crown state by Simon Thompson of the IGN News. I saw this in theaters at the Showcase Cinemas movie theater in War Crown during my April break, this past April, during my April break. And this was not a bad movie. I, I liked it. It wasn't perfect or anything, but it, it was nice. This, was, this film was actually, this film unfortunately was a box office bomb, unfortunately. Didn't really get enough. Oddly enough, though, the, when I went, the theater was packed. But, uh, probably because it was a, it was a, there was a kid's birthday party going on, so I guess all the kids went to go see it. <laughs> Yeah, but I enjoyed this movie. Here's the spine. This is the first. Uh, this was the first Leica film to not be uh, released by Focus Features. It was released by uh, United Artists. Here's the spine. Back an instantly rewatchable family favorite. Stay by David Trumbo Trumber of Collider. Despite being a box office bomb, this, the film did get great reviews. Let's see. got commentary by director Chris Butler. Cream is. Yeah. Cream, Mr. Link, bringing the final battle on the ice bridge to life, and so much more. Yeah, I really, really, really enjoyed this movie. We got a digital copy code. Here's the Blu-ray disc, which is a blue disc, and here's the DVD, which is a uh, great disc. Since now, Disney owns 20th Century Fox. Yep. Missing Link, good movie. Now, this Blu-ray I got at Walmart North Island back on December 3rd, and Blu-ray came out on December 3rd, and this is a film I'm kind of iffy of. It's one of my least favorite films of 2019, uh, to be honest. This is the Blu-ray of Ready or Not. Now, I loved the concept of this movie, but I felt like it wasn't, it was portrayed very badly. Uh, for those who've never heard this movie, Ready or Not tells the story of um, a woman named Grace, uh, this character right here, who in the movie is played by Samira Weaving. On the night of her wedding, she must participate in a deadly game of hide-and-seek against her new in-laws and must survive the night in order to survive. And even says right here, a killer game of hide-and-seek. I thought I loved that concept, but I felt like it was per it was handled really badly. I'm going to go into some spoilers, so if you haven't seen this movie yet, please just fast-forward it. Or if you don't mind just getting spoiled, just... That's okay. Basically, I love the whole concept, like, you know, of a deadly game of hide-and-seek, but I feel like the whole explanation behind it was really bad. Like, basically, the, the, the whole explanation for all of it is that the man that Mary, that Grace marries, Alex, comes from a family that became a rich family that got rich from uh, board games, but one of their ancestors made a deal with a guy named Mr. LaBelle. In order to become rich, they must play a board game. So whenever a new member of the family joins, they must play, pull a card from a box and play whatever board game is on there in order to join the family. But if that person pulls the hide-and-seek uh, card, the family must sacrifice that person before dawn, or else it's believed they'll die a horrific death. 
I felt that was a little too ridiculous for like a setting like this because this is set during the modern day. Like, had this movie been set maybe like in the Victorian era or something, maybe I would have bought the premise more. Basically, I think the first half of this movie is really, really well done. Like, you know, the whole thing, the suspense and the... Basically, this is this is kind of like a black comedy movie where it's like horror mixed with some comic relief, which actually was handled really well, but some of it was... Some of the deaths in this movie were kind of made, seem as they were just done for jokes. And they were hysterical, though. But anyway, yeah, I feel like the first half of the, everything from the game of hide-and-seek beginning up until, say, when Grace crashes the, the butler's car, I felt all that was really well done, but then... Right when they get to the ritual, when Daniel saves Grace, I felt like it just got really ridiculous. Like, I don't like how the character Alex betrayed Grace. I felt like that was just really, really, really cliche. Like, is, 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 am I the only one that gets this opinion? Yeah, I saw this in theaters back in August. I wasn't going to see it, but however, the trailer... Like, I saw the Red Band trailer, and it looked kind of interesting, but then the, it got all these great... It got all these good reviews, so I decided to go check it out. And initially, I really disliked the movie, but I thought maybe another rewatch would help, because a lot of audiences really enjoyed it. And so basically I uh, then bought this Blu-ray and watched it. And I liked it a lot better the second time. There's a lot of things I really loved about this movie and a lot of things I really didn't like about this movie. But yeah, if you're into these kind of movies, then yeah, I, I recommend it. Here's the spine. Back, A Devilishly Good Times Day by Jonathan Barkin of Dead Central. I was just got to let the games begin by the making of Radio, Radio or Not Gag Reel in a gallery. And there's an audio commentary with Samara Weaving and uh, the film's directors, uh, Matt Betta, Nelly, Oakland, and Tyler Gallette. And if I'm not I listened to the audio commentary. I believe also one of the executive producers was also in, in that commentary. I, I don't remember. Yep. And I'm going to be honest, I hate this cover. I don't like this whole one character on the cover thing. I think they should have used the film's theatrical poster as the cover. Because like a lot of movies nowadays, the Blu-ray covers are basically just the film's posters. The, the film's poster, I, literally, I, I actually really like the design of the poster. I wish that was the cover, but... What are you going to do? And we got a digital copy code and an eco case. And since Disney owns Fox now, it's just a blue disc. Because this film was uh, was released by Fox Searchlight Pictures, uh, a division of 20th Century Fox. The film didn't make as much money at the box office, but I, th I, would, I think it was considered a success due to the fact that it only had a $6 million budget. Because the film, worldwide, the film made $57 million worldwide, which isn't bad for a movie with a $6 million budget. But yeah, if you're into... I'm going to... I, there's a lot of stuff I liked about Ready or Not, and a lot of stuff I didn't like. If you've seen Ready or Not, please let me know what you think in the comments below. All right, now we're going to go to the stuff I got for Christmas. This first one's like a box set. This is a really interesting one. This is yep, the Steven Spielberg Director's Collection. This has a lot of Steven Spielberg's movies. A lot of these films, quite a few of these movies I actually have on Blu-ray, but there's some I don't. Yeah, this is an awesome set. We all know Steven Spielberg is my all-time favorite director. And, um, yeah, this was the other Steven Spielberg I was talking about. Yeah, he's my all-time favorite director. As we all know, I did, a year and a half ago, back in April 2018, I did audition for his remake of West Side Story. Unfortunately, I did not end up getting the part I auditioned for, but that's okay. By the way, his West Side Story remake is scheduled to come out in December 2020. I don't remember the exact date, but... Anyways, here we got the spine. The bottom... The top and the back. Eight unforgettable movies from one visionary director. HD picture and theater quality sound. This doesn't have all of his um, movies, though. Uh, basically, most of his... Basically, the movies that were released by Universal. Got hours of bonus features. Making of documentary. Steven Spielberg interviews. Behind the scenes interview. Behind the scenes feature us. For arch archival footage. Delete scenes. Much more. This has a quite... as his first three movies, that being Duel, The Sugarland Express, and Jaws, also has films 1941, theatrical extended versions, E.T., The Extraterrestrial, Always, Jurassic Park, and The Lost World of Jurassic Park. Yeah, Jaws, we all know, is my all-time favorite movie. So I'm going to take this out, and before I show you this, also also came with a book. I'll flip through it real quickly. And here we got this. Let's open this up. Here's the first one for Duel. You know, I do have this film on Blu-ray. Yep. 
This was his first film, a television film that aired back in 1971. One of the features on that, we got a commentary with director Steven Spielberg, Steven Spielberg on the small screen, Richard Rapp, Matheson, the writing of Duel, photographs and poster galleries, and a trailer. Yep. A very impressive debut for a director like him. Here we got the disc. Oh, it has artwork. You could see uh, Den Dennis Weaver and the truck. I don't remember what Dennis Weaver's character's name is. Yeah, but... Here we got his second film, The Sugarland Express from 1974. Oh, by the way, there's these quotes from uh, Steven Spielberg I'll read. Or Duel. Duel's an indictment of machines, and I determined very early on that everything about the film would be the complete disruption of the whole technological society. And for Sugarland Express, for me, anybody else, nobody else sees it that way, but I think the heroes are the police, and I think the villains are the well-wishers that wish a little too much for these people. And the only bonus feature on here is the theatrical trailer. I've seen parts of this movie. I, I saw, like, the first, like, 45 minutes of the movie. I actually haven't seen the rest, though. I saw it a long time ago, about like a year and a half ago. I never finished it, though. But here's the disc. Artwork. And now we got my favorite one and my all-time favorite movie, Jaws, you know, from 1975. I'm not so much afraid of sharks. I'm afraid of the water. I'm afraid of everything that exists under the water that I can't see. Bones here's got the lead scenes and outtakes, the making of Jaws, the shark is still working, the impact and legacy of Jaws, Jaws, the restoration from the set, storyboards, production photos, uh, marketing Jaws, Jaws phenomenon, and theatrical trailer. Yep, this is, um, as you know, I, this, most of the bonus features are from the 2012 Blu-ray I have, except that one doesn't have artwork, but the Blu-ray desk here does. You guys already can see the shark and Chrissy Watkins, Brody, Hooper, and Quint, and then another image of Quint. Here we got 1941 from 1979. I actually haven't seen this film yet, but it says, I often describe 1941 as having your head stuck in a pinball machine while somebody else is hitting tilt over and over again, said by Steven Spielberg. Well, this just got includes theatrical extended versions, the making of 1941, deleted scenes, production photographs, and theatrical trailers. Yeah, I actually haven't seen this film yet, but I know it has Dan Aykroyd and the late John Belushi, as well as two actors from Jaws, that being Lorene Gary and Murray Hamilton. Yep, here's the disc. It work. It's nice. Here we got one of my, my second favorite Steven Spielberg movie, E.T. the Extraterrestrial from 1982. You're not supposed to fall in love with your own movie, but I fell in love with E.T. E.T. is one of Steven Spielberg's personal favorite movies that he did. Let's just got delete scenes, Steven Spielberg and E.T., the E.T. journeys, a look back, the evolution creation of E.T., the E.T. reunion, the music of E.T., a dis discussion with John Williams, the 20th anniversary premiere, design, photographs, marketing, and theatrical trailers. Yeah, I believe, yeah, most of these are from the, the 35th anniversary of Blu-ray that came out two years ago that I have. Here we got the disc. Is that where you can see E.T. and Elliot, Gertie, and another thing of Elliot. And here we got Always, a film from 1989. Haven't seen this film yet, but I'll try to see it soon. It's a story about life and love and how love connects even after someone is gone. It's romance that spans two worlds, one present and one ever present. There's something about the idea that something could just be over your shoulder, getting through to you even though you can't see or hear him. Once well, you've got a theatrical trailer. And here's the artwork. And here we got another one of his best movies, Jurassic Park from 1993. I didn't make it to change the way people saw the world. I made the movie because it was entertaining, and it was. And and it was the kind of movie I wanted to see. I was just got, this film I actually do not have on Blu-ray, though, but I do have Jurassic World and Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom on Blu-ray. Got Return to Jurassic Park, Down of an Air, Return to Jurassic Park, Making Prehistory, Return to Jurassic Park, The Next Step in Evolution, The Making of Jurassic Park, Original Featurettes and Making of the Film, Steven Spielberg directs Jurassic Park, Hurricane and... Qua featurette, early pre-production meetings, location scouting, Phil, Tippett, animatics, r raptors in the kitchen, animatics, T-Rex attack, IML and Jurassic Park before and after the visual effects, Foley artists, storyboards, production archives, photographs, design sketches, and conceptual paintings, Jurassic Park, the making, the game, and theatrical trailer. And here we got the desk. You can see Alan Grant, Ellie, and a couple other characters. And finally, we got... The sequel, The Lost World of Jurassic Park from 1997. The first movie was really about the failure of technology and the success of nature. This movie is about the failure of people to find and restrain them with themselves, the failure of morality to protect these animals. I actually have not seen the sequel. The only Jurassic Park movies I've seen are the original Jurassic Park, Jurassic World, and Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. I also just got Return to Jurassic Park, Finding the Lost World, Return to Jurassic Park, Something Survive, Deleted Scenes, The Making of the Lost World, Original Feature and the Making of the Film, The Jurassic Park Phenomenon, Discussion with Another Michael with author Michael Crane, because 
Jurassic Park is based on his 1990 book of the same name. The Comfy Dance Numbers. Thank you, Steven Spielberg, from ILM. ILM and the Wallace World before and after the visual effects. Production archives, production photographs, illustrations, conceptual drawings, models, the world of Jurassic Park, the magic of ILM, posters and toys, storyboards, and a theatrical trailer. And here we got the disc. And it says, all these things with Steven Spielberg, it says, when I grow up, I still want to be a director. And it says, I dream from a living, and there's a signature from him. Yeah, this is an awesome, awesome, and uh, by the way, here's the other spine. Yeah, this was an awesome, awesome, awesome set. Thank you to the person that got this for Christmas for me. Yep, this is a great, great set. All right, now the other ones I got for Christmas. Sorry, that took a while. First up, we got one of my favorite films from this year. The 4K Blu-ray of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Now, I absolutely loved this film. Over 20 minutes of additional after scenes plus exclusive behind the scenes. Yep, this is... This is currently my third favorite film of 2019, only behind Avengers Endgame and Toy Story 4. Yeah, this is a great movie. It's got a great cast, like, you know, you got Leonardo DiCaprio playing a fictional actor named Rick Dalton, Brad Pitt playing Cliff Booth, Dalton's stunt double, and Margot Robbie portraying a fictional version of the late Sharon Tate. Yeah, this was a great, great movie. If you have not seen this film, I definitely, definitely, definitely recommend it. This was actually, um, the ending of this movie is what made it worth seeing seeing uh yeah i'm not gonna spoil the ending but the ending is what made the movie itself worth seeing yeah and i'm glad i got this version i i know there was also another version of the 4k that had that was like a big set that had all these that was like a like a big box set i didn't want to get that though i wanted to get this regular version and i was hoping i was glad i didn't get the regular because i really didn't like the cover for the regular Blu-ray. I, I like this cover the best this is this cover here is the film's theatrical poster this is a great poster it was a great poster, anyway. This is also the first uh, Quentin Tarantino movie to not be released by the Weinstein Company. Because uh, of uh, Harvey Weinstein's sexual allegations, Quentin Tarantino cut ties with them. And instead, this film was released by Sony through their Columbia Pictures banner. Here's the spine. Back. No critic review. Let's just got Quentin Tarantino's love letter to Hollywood. Bob Richardson for the love of film. Stop talk. Shop talk. The cars of 1969. Restoring Hollywood. The production design of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And the fashion of... 1969 and more sights and sounds of the 60s with seven additional deleted scenes yeah i saw some theaters at the showcase cinemas movie theater in warwick Island back on july 27th yeah this was a great movie the, the film came out in late july 2019 but the film itself premiered at film festivals in may of 2019 yeah but yeah this this is an awesome movie if you look i can't recommend this movie enough if you're into fictional versions of hollywood and stuff like that this movie is definitely for you we got a digital copy code, which I've already entered in. Here's the 4K Blu-ray, which is kind of like the design, kind of like a record. And same thing with the regular Blu-ray. Yeah. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Amazing movie. Definitely, definitely recommend it. All right, now here, this was, these next two movies were ones I got for Christmas. These were sort of blind buys. I didn't get, I didn't see theaters. This is, first up, this is the Blu-ray of Child's Play from the producers of It, Viciously and Fun and Clever, said by Heather Winston of Daily Dead. I actually have not seen this film yet, but I was kind of interested in checking it out because the Chucky the doll, we you know, is actually voiced by Mark Hamill, who plays Luke Skywalker. Yeah, I was kind of interested in seeing this movie, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check this movie out when I get the chance. Here's the spine, back, whole lot of bloody fun, said by Ryan Scott of Movie Web. I always just got an audio commentary by director Lars Cleveberg, The Making of Child's Play, Bringing Child's Play, Chucky to Life, Soundtrack Trailer, Lee Harlow Scale, Claymations, Gallery, and a Theatrical Trailer. Here we got a digital copy code, it's an eco case. And here's the disc, it's a blue disc. Yep, Child's Play, looking forward to checking this out. If you've seen it, tell me what you think. All right, now these two are 4K ones. This first one, it was kind of a blind buy, but I actually watched it yesterday. This is the Blu-ray, the 4K Blu-ray of yesterday. I believe in yesterday, and you will too. Stay by Mike Revs of Cinema Blend. Everyone in the world has forgotten about the Beals, everyone except Jack, because actually the main character of the movie is also named Jack. This film is actually, I actually did not see this film in theaters, but I watched it for the first time last night, and I really, really, really enjoyed this movie. The Beatles are actually my favorite band, and uh, Yesterday, believe it or not, is also my favorite Beatles song. Yeah, my favorite Beatles song is Yesterday. It's a great song. 
Yep. Yeah, this was actually a really good movie. I, I actually really enjoyed it. I regret not seeing this in theaters. And anyway, we've got the spine back. An uplifting triumph of heartfelt comedy to a Mike Ray's of Cinema Blend. Uh, Phones just got alternating and delete scenes with more Beatles music performed by Hymish Patel, Ed Sheeran from Stadium Screen, Agent of Comedy, Kate McKinn, live at Abbey Road Studios, and more. Yep. Oops, up. Here we got the digital copy code. Here's the 4K Blu-ray, which is already, you can see Jack walking across the street, basically imitating that famous Beatles album co cover. And here's the rare Blu-ray, which is a see-through distance. This is a universal Blu-ray. Yeah. If you have not seen Yesterday, I definitely recommend it. Great, great, good, good, good movie, I should say. All right. And last but not least, this is a film I actually did see. This is It Chapter 2. This includes a bonus disc with an It documentary. Now, this was actually a good sequel. This was actually, this film was actually, this is one of those rare sequels that lives up to the first movie. Um, now, I did not see, as you know, I do have the first It on Blu-ray, and we all know back in 2017, I did not see the first It movie in theaters, but for this movie, I did see this, I did, I did, for It Chapter 2, this one I did see in theaters. I saw this in theaters with my friends, Zach and Mitchell, at the Showcase Cinemas Movie Theater in Warwick Island back on opening night, back on, what was it, um... Was it September sixth? I, I, I can't. I can't remember. Uh, but it was the first. Um, yeah, yeah. But this is actually a really good sequel. I have to say, the child act. The, the, since like you know, this movie came out two years after the first It movie. Basically, they got different actors to play the main characters. Since the first, technically, this is almost as if the It story was split into two parts. Because for the original It story, the first half of the book focused on the characters as children, then the second half focuses them on adults. So the first It movie was focused on the kids. This movie is focused on the adults. And I submit, the adult actors literally act and look exactly like the kid actors to the point where you feel like they were actually the kid actors as adults. That was really impressive. And Bill Skarsgård performance as Pennywise, top notch. Yeah, my only complaint about the movie, I, I think a lot of us agree, I think we all agreed that the movie was way too long. It was almost three hours long. Well, particularly the movie was two hours and 49 minutes long, which is pretty long. I feel like there were a lot of scenes that could have either been shortened or cut out completely, but I digress. Here's the spine. Back, a truly epic conclusion to one of the greatest horror stories in cinema history, stated with Jake Hamilton of Fox TV. Let's just got documentaries, The Summers of It, Chapter one, you'll float two in chapter it in chapter two. It ends behind scenes featurettes. The meaning of the Loser's Club has officially begun. Pennywise lives again, finding the deadlights and commentary by director Andy Muschietti. Uh, Andy Muschietti also directed the first it as well. Yeah, this I really enjoyed this movie. We got the digital copy codes. Here's the 4K Blu-ray, and here's the regular Blu-ray disc with the movie. And there's some stacked discs. Let's lift the 4K disc up. We have the Blu-ray disc, the regular Blu-ray disc with the bonus features. Yeah. Not a big fan of the stack disc. Yeah, but It Chapter 2, good sequel. Definitely, definitely, definitely recommend it. All right, that's my big DVD and Blu-ray update for today, December 26, 2019. I will see you all for my next video coming soon.